Hey folks, Cubeball here. Uh, thought I'd get down in the shed. Hope you're all having a nice Christmas. Uh, obviously, New Year's coming up. Uh, lovely weather outside for this time of year. It's about 12 degrees outside. Um, I was going to take the, the RF out for a blast, but uh, by the time I'd made my mind up, I'd be asked to gear up and gear up and then go for the rowing and put me before you know it's four hours later. So I think I'm going to save that for my birthday, which is New Year's Day. So I'll probably put the camera on board and show the new stubby while we're out and about. Yeah, so uh, while we're here, uh, I've, got, I've had a new calendar, 2019. I've got a Ducati 996, Kawasaki Z1 A and B, Moto Guzzi MK2. Suzuki GT750, the RG500 GSX R750F, and the Yamaha RD250 LC, and a Honda VF750F uh, on the calendar. So it's not January yet, but it will be. Let's find a nice uh, spot for it. Perhaps over here, eh? Hang her up. That'll do. And we'll get a little uh, ornament for the shed. So that's that done. Yeah, so today's video is going to be an oil change on the Bandit. So, uh, first things first, I'm going to fire the bike up. Let it run for a few minutes. Normally let it run 60 seconds, get the oil warm in the engine. Yeah, it's not been run for a week, so that's probably why it's a bit lumpy. Get the fumes out, eh? So the next job, I'll get the camera down the bottom of the bike, and uh, we'll get the oil sump nut out, we'll let the oil drain. So once I've all got that set up, I'll bring you back in. Right, folks, cube all here. Hopefully, you can see everything. Battery's on one bar, so I'm going to try and get this done as quick as I can. I'll put some light in here as well. Uh, there's your sump nut. And forget because it's upside down, I always mention this. It's anti clock um, it's clockwise to undo and anti-clockwise to tighten up. So hopefully fingers crossed I've got this right. I've buggered this up a few times. Um I'll put that too far there, I'll get with oil on my phone. So get, get your uh, wrenching normally it's a 21 or 19 mil nut but this is an oversized nut that i've got from my old workplace uh, this is a 13 got me out of trouble so just make sure you've got it the right way normally you use a spanner to do this um especially when you tighten it up best off using a spanner otherwise you get the chance of uh, rounding it off so just make sure which way we're doing it so this is clockwise you'd think that would be to to tighten it up because it's upside down it's the opposite so i'm just checking yeah so that's clockwise so i'm going to just start doing it and it's loosening up nicely not too not putting too much on it get ready for the bolt when the oil all comes shooting out should be able to do that with my hand now i 
what I'm going to do. I'm just going to put that in there with it. I should do that with my hand. It's a beautiful fiddly job there with me folks. So I'm just going to do this with my hand now. And just watch that oil's going to be a, a touch hot. There we go. And if I could just grab the camera and bring you in folks. Hopefully you can see all that. That's the oil draining out into a suitable tray of your choice. Uh, and while we're waiting that to dry, we'll have a cup of tea and then we'll tackle the uh, oil filter. Catch you in the bit. Right folks, cue ball back. Bit priorities right. Not a cup of tea, a cup of coffee for me. I'll have some beer later when the missus has gone to work. And we're in the shed. I mean it is quite it's not that cold out there but fuck it, put the heater on. Luxuries of having your shed, eh? Uh, let's have another look while we're here. You can see there's a slight thin drip. So I'm just gonna give that another five minutes so we get all that old oil out and then we're gonna tackle that oil filter. Right folks, cue ball back. There's still a little bit of oil coming out. We'll just put that little cap there for now, I'll keep an eye on that. I'll push this over. So now we're gonna tackle the oil filter. I can just get that in there. So just there. If I can just get a bit of light in there for you. I don't know if you can quite see that. Um, there's the filter. To, I'm just going to loosen it up and then as I loosen it up I'll bring the camera back in. So I'll just put the camera there for now. Put a bit of light in under there if I can. Just get your hand in best as you can. It's anti-clockwise to undo these. You can get your hand in. Sometimes you can't get them out. Oh, so I'm just gonna first things first, I'm just gonna loosen it up. Right folks, after a bit of Consistence. I've managed to start turning it round, and what I'm going to try and do is bring it a bit of light. See if I can get you in there while I'm doing it. It's tough to get a camera shot from here because. Bloody shot. Right. I'm hoping that's enough so you can see. You can see the oil coming out, if you can see there on the camera, just loosening it up. That should just drop out. There we go. You see it? Hopefully you can. You can see it's just come out. 
Well now I'm just going to drop it into this oil tray. It's just a bit fiddly. You try doing a uh, service on your bike and film it if you've only got one pair of hands. So, I need to get the filter. Out of the bike. Side. Just drop that in the old oil. Right, I'm just going to clean up and then we'll uh, we'll grab the new filter. Right folks, cube all back. Just uh, oil filter, no particular brand. This is just one that I get from someone that I know for a discounted price. Just take the plastic off the filter. Take that heater off, I'm fucking sweating in here now. Speaker off. So there's one oil filter. Hopefully you can see that. And just a little tip while you're here. Old or new oil don't really really make a difference. Get some of the old oil or new oil. Just put it around the rubber seal. Probably new oil will be a better uh, option. But uh, oil's oil to me. A bit of the old oil won't hurt anything. Just to grease it up, and same on the inside, just so it's easy when you thread it on, and it's clockwise to put it on. So that's all oiled up now. Let's put it on the bike. I'm just gonna wipe my hands. Now for a little bit of a fiddly bit of the job. Uh, let's get the camera in there. I've put the filter in ready you can see the uh, where it's got to be screwed on to I'm just showing you this now because I don't know if I can get you in there with the camera but where, the, where I've dropped the filter in that's just got to go on there clockwise so I'll try and get you in if I can and I'm going to tighten it up um, like I, said, I don't know if you can see this so I've got the filter I'm just going to try and get it on the bike now it's just a little bit fiddly once you feel it, oh, that's on. I think. Yeah, that's it. Oh, now I can bring the camera in. I've got the. That filter's now on the bike. So I'm going to try and get the light in there. At the same time, turn it up. You should be able to see that going round. Just spin it round clockwise. Nice and easy, like so. And all you got to do is keep spinning it. You ain't going to over tighten these. Literally, just keep spinning it until it stops. And then when it stops, literally, just get your one hand half a turn. That's all you've got to do. So I'm just going to get my hand in there, half a turn, clockwise. Half a turn, if it still feels a bit loose, perhaps another, that's a quarter of a turn. I've done half a turn and a quarter of a turn. And it ain't spinning no more. And literally, that don't need tightening up anymore. So as soon as it tightens up, half a turn, if it still feels a bit loose, perhaps a quarter of a maximum, another half a turn. If it is leaking any oil, when you start riding it, all you got to do is turn your engine off, nip it up, and see if it's still leaking. Next job, let's put the sump nut back in the sump. So down we go. Right, folks, how are we doing? Cue ball back. Uh, just a bit of light in here. This sump nut here, it's not the original. This is for a. Uh, would you believe it or not? I think you've heard it before on one of my old videos. It's for a Ford. I got it from my old workplace on the inside of the nut there's already a seal and I would advise to anybody doing the oil change always buy a new oil sump nut but in this case I always inspect the nut before I put it back in make sure there's no metal or anything from inside the engine and that's still perfectly good usable nut but I would advise to anybody doing an oil change 
just replacing it. Um, and I always, as well, before I put the nut back in, just a bit of, a bit of regular grease, no particular brand, and just put a bit of grease on the sump nut. Not on the top, only on the uh, thread. Just a little bit of grease, just to round as you go. Just to make it easier when it goes into the uh, sump nut. Only on the threads. I always wipe the top, just make sure there's nothing going into the engine. A bit of grease will hurt it, but stuff like gaskets and stuff, if you're using stuff like Hylomar, you don't want that floating around your engine, but a bit of regular grease won't do any harm. So I'm, now I'm going to get the camera back down the bottom and we'll get the nut back in. Folks, cue ball back, hopefully you can see everything. Um, something up there, hopefully you get a good picture of that. Um, it's still dripping a bit of oil, I've just put an old rag down. Um, so don't know on my wheels. Hopefully you can see everything. Um, here's the nut with the grease on. And when you put it back in, hopefully you can see that, it's anti-clockwise. So just put it in nice and gentle. And just remember which way you're putting it in. And in this instance, anti-clockwise. Just feel for the threads. So this is not the original nut. I'm going to get the 13mm uh, socket. Just make sure you're doing it the right way up. Get the threads in. Clockwise, nice and gentle. Said, I would advise use a spanner. In this case, I've got loads of spanners, but I've put loads of things in jars and stuff. I just couldn't be asking looking for them. Now normally you get to the point where it's it's tight and you just nip it up with your loose hand. Obviously, because I can't be asked to go and find my spanners, I'm just gonna nip it up slightly with my socket, not too much. And I'd say that's enough for now. I'm not gonna tighten that up anymore. Being an oversized nut anyway, when you put the oil in, just check, make sure there's no oil coming in. So we'll just give it one more just in case, just to make sure I don't get leaning on it. That's I'm not going to tighten it up anymore. To be honest, while I'm here, I'm going to get a spanner and I'm just going to check, just, just check it. So two seconds. Right folks, cue ball here. Got the spanner now. Like I said, in normal a normal sump nut would be a 19 or a 21. Because this is a different sort of nut that I used to get me out of trouble before. It's a 13, so I've got my spanner. Don't forget, anti-clockwise. Just make sure you're doing it the correct way. Clockwise anti. I've just nicked that up. Just making sure I'm doing that because it's upside down, I keep forgetting. Clockwise anti. Anti. So you don't really need to tighten it up much, that'll do. Literally just get your weaky stand now and just and just lean on it a little bit. Not too much. I'd say that is about as much as you need to tighten that up. So next job, let's put the oil in the bike and uh, make sure there's no oil leaking out this sump nut. First job, 
He's uh get the light in there. Bit more light in there. And if you're not sure as well, over here, the amount of oil to put in your engine. Good old Suzuki, put the amount that you need. In this case, 3,300 millilitres of, and if you don't know the type either, it also puts it on there, 10W40 oil. So the first job is undo that anti-clockwise. Should be coming undone. Okay, it's tight. I'm just going to undo that. Managed to get that undone. It for some reason it was a bit stiff. So anti-clockwise to undo that. Put that somewhere safe. And then the next job, put your oil in there. Cue ball back. Now the last oil video I did, I just put it in with my arm. The missus was throwing one of these away, so I thought I'd have that come in handy for the next oil change. As you can see on this uh, jar. Um, just get the two minutes touch screen on the GoPro 4 a thousand millilitres so it'll be three of them and then a, th a 300 and then you'll know exactly what's in your engine so first things first let's fill her up this is just an old oil um, container I said I don't buy my oil from dealership anymore I know some guy and he gets it a little bit cheaper for me but normally if you did buy it on uh, uh, eBay or wherever you buy it from I normally buy this motel this is a different type obviously but it's got a different oil in there it's 10w40 so we'll put a thousand millilitres in to start with I'm filling her up. I'm going to just fill her up with two hands. As you can see, 1,000 millilitres of oil. Next job is to put her in there. Get yourself a uh, oil funnel in place and uh, pour them in. I do prefer my two hands. So, what I'm going to do. I'm just going to get the camera somewhere safe and then I'm going to use my two hands to put it in. Right, you can see me now. I've put the funnel in the engine. Now I'm going to try and do this without spilling any oil. At least you ain't got to keep checking the oil. You know what the amount that's going in your engine. This funnel's... I've got a better funnel than this. This one's an awkward one. There's 1,000 millilitres of 10W40 engine oil. And all you do now is do another two of those and then a 300 mil. And then one, one, once I've come to the 300 mil, I'll show you putting the last bit in. And then I'll show you a little trick on the Suzuki Bandit that you can check your oil level without using a stick. Right, I'm doing folks, cue all back. Uh, last part of the job. Make sure you can see everything there. 300 millilitres of oil. Last little bit of the job. There we go. The oil out of the 
away somewhere. There we go, 300 millilitres. Right, I'm just going to put the camera in a nice position for you so you can see the last bit of the oil going into the engine. Last bit of the oil. Make sure it's all gone in. You can always top it up once you've checked the uh, the level. Uh, before before we put the top back on, so I was going to show you. Uh, just grab my torch. Two seconds. On the bandit, on the side of the models, you have a oil glass eye, and in this instance, the bike is on its side stand. Normally, I put it on the centre stand, but in the shed, it don't like doing that because of the wood. So, uh, we're going to level the bike up and check the oil level. So, if I can, I'm going to level the bike up best I can. So, get the extensions on this tripod. Let's see if we can get you in there. Best we can. Hopefully, you can see that. Just leveling the bike up. And there, as you can see, it's on full. So, I'm going to try and get you some light in there. Two minutes. You can see that there, there. You can see that now. And on the bottom, there's a low, and there's also a full. There, that's bang on full. I run the engine, check it again. If it's low, just top it up. Next job, let's put the cap back on. Also, while you're here. Take that out of there. Is the cap? Uh, let's get a bit of the oil at the fill at the uh, funnel. Let's put it round the cap so it makes it nice and easy when it goes back in. Wipe your hands because I'm not the camera. So you try doing this. I've been trying to film it at the same time. And the next job. Just tighten her up. Finger tight. Next job, fire the bike up. Right folks, cue ball back. Uh, just forgot to mention, just before you do anything, just, uh, do this, I'm not going to show this on the video, I've showed you a number of times. Just get underneath the bike, check the uh, oil nut, just make sure there's no oil dripping out of three, just nip it up, same with the oil filter overnight I'll just leave a nice white sheet if I see any oil dripping I'll nip them up and the next job is uh, fire the bike up I showed you this tip before when the bike is on the oil light is on when you fire the bike up that will stay on for a few seconds because you've done the oil change if that stays on turn the bike off it means you've got problems with your oil uh, if it goes off, everything's run, just leave it running for uh, 60 seconds. See, stay on for a few seconds. As I mentioned, 
blinkers off. If it stays on, cut your engine. But uh, in this instance, it's gone off. Happy days. folks that's it then just leave your bike running for 60 seconds two minutes tops just keep checking it make sure that oil lights coming on and off and you've got no problems with oil um, dispose your oil make sure you get rid of it correctly put it into an old bottle take it down the waste wherever you've got to take it don't get putting it down a drain somewhere not the right thing to do um, yeah and just just keep checking your oil filters and the nut make sure you've got no leaks and uh, that's it so that video is how to change your oil and oil filter on a suzuki bandit 98 slash your 90s japanese motorcycle bike which i probably will call this video because i've already got another video about the bandit and uh, hopefully you enjoyed that uh i've got a couple of videos lined up whether i do them this weekend might be next weekend depending what i'm doing um i have got uh, a tool review coming up someone had brought me uh the till for Christmas, so I'm going to do a review on that till. Uh, I need to do service on the, the RF. I might, I might also take you out on the bike on the RF if I get the weather because my birthday's coming up. Uh, so I'll leave it there. I hope you're all having a great Christmas and you have a great new year. And I'll catch you for the next one. Ride safe.